Hey guys, um, I did not plan this out properly. <laughs> there. All right, so <laughs> this is a completely overdue um, video. I can't put this on. Um, but someone wanted me to show you guys how to make a Iron Man gauntlet. Now, I'm sure there's tons of videos on how to do this already. But um, I wanted to give you guys my little take on it. And not a whole lot of people have been able to put a little circle thingy, as far as I can tell. So, um, the most, th I wish I had a, 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 a little bit more of a form-fitting glove, but it's about as close as I can get. Now, these pieces are not very good pieces. This is more of like a prototype to see where the joints are all connected and everything. But you can make better looking ones with foam. Again, I actually made this before I knew about foam. So, um, these are the general shapes that you want to make, though. This little, so you basically cut out a square, and then you cut off the edges off of them. Now with foam, now if you get the thinner stuff, it's perfect for this. Uh, you can even bevel it a little bit. You make it to where it's not like a normal gauntlet where, you know, the pieces go over it. It's just, you know, it's supposed to look straight whenever it's closed and then open uh, kind of thing. But yeah, it has two bevels, one going this way and then another going this way. Then it's flush on the top. So whenever you close everything, it's supposed to be completely flush. So what I would recommend is you just take a long street, um, a long piece of foam that's about the same width of the finger and then bevel it uh, without cutting anything yet just bevel it evenly on both sides and then lay it on your finger cut it where the joints are and then cut these little like rectangular things off um, and then for the finger I recommend using the thicker foam and then like digging a hole out through like the side you might have to glue two pieces together and then sand everything down um, and then matching the bevel of the knuckle and then it should fit right over. Now, these are going to also feel a little weird since you can't actually feel it with the tip of your finger, like this kind of thing. Um, if you're using cardboard, you had I, I have I made this little jig up to kind of make a wrap. But if you're using foam, you can put glue two pieces of foam together, hollow it out a little bit, and then just bevel it with the rest. Okay, so the inside of the hand is, not even kidding you, impossible. This, don't worry about this stuff. This is all not part of it this is but this little stuff you don't have to worry about you just make sure it's red or whatever color and then this piece um i used from uh the bottom of like a, a dresser or something uh i figured it looked close enough to a repulsor so and then the back of the hand is what is really interesting and i'll put that on right now okay so uh, years of moving and everything has completely skewed this to the side, but hopefully you can kind of see how this is supposed to work. So, and again, this would be better with foam because then it could be beveled high. So it's basically just a simple shape, two shapes, I guess. And there's a little slit right there. What that is, is it tracks it. So, uh, this is actually a hinged piece, so I can actually push it back. Now, it doesn't move that far anymore, like I said, from all the moving, and it actually ends up bending but you can kind of see that it's supposed to do that. And again, with foam, it'd be much more, uh, ironically enough, it'd be a little bit more rigid or a little less giving, and the hinge pieces would give more than just the actual material. So, um, But that's what I did, is I just took a slip, I put a piece through, and then on the bottom there, I glued a um, just a flat piece so it wouldn't pop out. And then there you go, you can lift your hand. Um, but to be quite honest, that's as far as I've gotten to doing that. Let's see if I can get my hand out of here. One-handed. If I can, I'll be amazed with myself. Oh, there we go. Um, I'm, I'm really sorry that this came out so late. Um, I just, at the time, I was at my dad's, and it just, again, I couldn't make anything. So I should uh, be trying to do that whenever I get back, um, making an actual gauntlet. Uh, and then the arm piece, honestly, is really, really simple, though. It's just form-fitting to your arm with a bunch of little detail lines and everything. And then this big, hunky piece that goes on the forearm, which, again, is also super simple. Um, this is one of those things, especially, that you kind of have to eyeball. There's not a set way to do it. Um, unless, I mean, you're going for, like, hinges. For instance, where the elbow is, because in the movie it has a bunch of little tiny ribbing. The only way that's really possible is if you use a little pipe stuff, but even then that's going to, like, pinch and still not let you bend all the way, so... I will try and figure something out, but as far as that goes, it's, yeah, just 
whole piece of foam, bevel it, cut it, and then sl slide something over your finger and glue it. Uh, make sure that this is a glove that's form fitting, but is also not too, uh, excuse me, not too terribly thin. Um, and don't worry about these rings. Just yeah. Uh, the rest, and again, also make sure it's the color of what uh, suit you're doing. Um, so if you're doing, you know, the stereotypical, or not, I wouldn't say stereotypical, but the, um, you know, the mainstream red and gold, that kind of stuff, then make sure it's a red glove underneath, and then paint everything red, or according to its actual color, because then it'll, it'll look a lot better than just cardboard. And also, um, if you're using cardboard, use a sealant. Um, because it really makes it look a lot nicer than it just looking like painted cardboard. So, all right, probably my shortest video yet. I'll talk to you guys later.